We're going to talk now about about what are we going to do in that short little life we have? How are we going to live it? That's the question. How are you going to live when God sends you to the world for a little bit? How are you going to live it? What way are you going to live it? And the answer is, and you know, that is the way of Jesus. And the way of Jesus is the way of vulnerability. The word vulnerability, you know where it comes from? It comes from a Latin word that means wound, vulnus. Jesus' way is the way of woundedness. Anybody wants to come up and help me with this? Anybody wants to come up? You want to go up again? Okay. You're welcome. But, uh, oh, you. Oh, that's good. Why don't we talk together? That's fine. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I want to talk first a little bit about the way of Jesus, okay? And I want you to, to, to listen very carefully because Jesus was born like a little baby. Hmm? He totally dependent on other people. And when Jesus died, he died on the cross and he was totally dependent on other people. Like you need help. Sometimes you walk, sometimes you do the things. I need help. We all need help. But we don't always like it. We like to do it on our own. You know, We like to say, I don't need your help. I can do it myself. And that's okay. But it's important to know that God, who is the powerful God, says, I want to let you come to know me by becoming a baby, by becoming a dependent teenager, by becoming a young man who works in the carpenter shop of Joseph, and as the person who finally is laughed at by everybody and says, you're worthless, you're no good. And it's very important for you and for me and for us to realize that God showed us the love of God through vulnerability. To somebody who, who says, I need you, I need your help to walk, I need your help to talk, I need your help to go to school, I need your help, and, and, and then only for a few years, just a few years, Jesus could walk on his own feet and speak, and then again, you know, they said, oh, you're no good, get out, and you will let me. And it's so important for you and for me and for all of us to know that God showed his love in vulnerability, in being dependent. And you know how they call Jesus? They call him a marginal Jew. <laughs> it's a big book written about Jesus called The Marginal Jew. Somebody who is not in the center. Or they called him the peasant of Nazareth. Who, who pays attention to peasant? Or the man from this little town that nobody had respect for, called Nazareth. Or they called him this crazy prophet. And you know, we believe that in this very weak, vulnerable, broken man, God came to show us his love. So, and and that, that's what, and what I want to say is that if that's true for Jesus, it's true for us too, okay? So why don't you sit down and talk about it. Think about that just for a moment. Think about that great mystery that God reveals his love in vulnerability in brokenness, 
in weakness. And not only long ago when Jesus lived, but right now, right here. The great mystery of our faith is that we get closest to God when we are willing to be vulnerable, when we are willing to say, I need somebody else, when we are willing to to show that we don't have it all together. And you know, this is so important. Because whether our disabilities are visible or not, we all have them. And whether we might not be able to walk or to talk or to eat by ourselves or to feel good about ourselves or to It's exactly there that Jesus comes, and it's exactly there that God's love becomes visible. Not where we are powerful, not where we are strong. You know, it's interesting. I was at the university, and and, and, and you heard that for, 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 for 20 years. And it was always studying about God and teaching about God to all these bright students. And I give talks and lectures and, and somewhere it was a very, very much of a competitive world. I want to be smarter than others. I want to show them that I could be, be with it and all that. And I suddenly realized that it was not in strength and power that God was coming to me, but in weakness. That's why I went to Lash. That's why I went to a community where people with disabilities are in the center, are the core, so that they could become my teachers. All these professors of Harvard and Yale and Notre Dame weren't able to say to me what people could say to me who were weak and were not afraid to, to hide it, were afraid to show it. And my own whole personal journey has not just been, oh, I want to help people with disabilities. No, my question was, I have to have better teachers. I have to have people who might not be able to walk or talk or eat by themselves or think logically or give lectures or all of that, but they can show us who God is. They are the place where God comes to me. And they help me to discover that I might be quite handicapped too after all. And I want you to hear this very well, because the question finally is not how can we help people with disabilities, which is a good question, but a much more important question is how can we allow people with disabilities to give their spiritual gifts to us and call us to conversion, call us to wholeness, call us to love? That's the question. You believe? You see what I'm saying? That's the real question. And so I want to talk a little bit about one man called Adam. What about 10 years ago, I joined a community for people with disabilities They said to me, Henry, why don't you help Adam? Now, Adam, Adam was a man who could not speak, 
Adam was a man who had constantly epileptic seizures. Adam had a curved back and he could not straighten out. Adam was always in a wheelchair. Adam could hardly eat without a lot of help. And he said, Henry, you take care of Adam. I said, oh, I'm not, not me, I tell you, I'm, I'm not scared. He said, no, no, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Early in the morning at 6 o'clock, he go, he take off his pajamas and give him a nice bathrobe and walk him to the bathtub and give him a bath. He shave him, clean his teeth, comb his hair, look out of the window what kind of weather it is and decide what he's going to wear. And bring him to the breakfast table and help him to eat and by 9 o'clock you can go to your work. What you think is your work. <laughs> I was really afraid. Very afraid. But Adam and I really fell in love with one another. And as I helped him day after day after day, I suddenly realized that Adam was leading me to a place that I'd never been. A place of prayer, a place of intimacy, a place of community, a place of God. And this very, very disabled young man became truly my theology teacher. And he taught me that being is more important than doing. I want to do many things. And Adam says, be with me. Just be with me. Adam told me that the heart is much more important than the mind. And that the human person is not a person who is bright and can think, but somebody who can love, give love and receive love. But what makes us human is our heart. Whether we can speak or not, that's all not the first important thing. And Adam told me that doing things together was more important than doing things alone. Because Adam needed so much help that about 10 or 20 people sometimes needed to be around him to make it to a day. But these people are loving each other in order to, laugh, to let Adam live. And just by who he was, he was saying, love one another because if you love one another, and I can live. And that was true. Because if we would love each other, we could hold each other. And just a few weeks ago, Adam died. He was 34 years old when he died. And I was right there with him. And I preached at his funeral and I brought him to the grave. And people came from Seattle and from Chicago and from Nova Scotia to be at his funeral. Because not just me, but because he needed so many people, hundreds of people over the last 34 years of his life had cared for him. And all these people who had cared for Adam had become a community of love. And when Adam died, there was a whole community that said, thank God for Adam, who never spoke a word, who never walked, who never could recognize persons or even say thank you. How much more of a teacher do you want? And if we speak about God's vulnerability in Jesus, I suddenly realized that Adam was Jesus coming to me again. Adam, who has been loved by God from all eternity, 
who was sent to us just for 34 years and who died to go home and praise God and leave behind him a community of love.